The war that is going on in Ukraine today has shown the stupidity, limitation, and ignorance of many people. Neither politicians, analysts, experts, nor the powerful of the world understand the signs of the times and the laws on which this world is based. At the beginning of the war, many said it would end in a few days with the defeat of Ukraine, but the war has been going on for months. Because all those who made predictions didn't take into account the most important thing, it's not man who determines fate and victory, but God. God always has the last word. Jesus Christ said, they are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. The great King Solomon said, there is a time for everything under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time for war and a time for peace. War will end sooner or later. Some won't survive it and will have to stand before God. And some will survive the war and will also have to stand before God. Anyway, it all ends with the judgment of God. That is why the focus should always remain on Christ. And the war only shows that all the biblical apocalyptic events we talked about all the time are reality. Often people didn't want to listen. Some didn't believe and didn't understand. Some still don't understand because they only want to listen to the positive things and have fun. But it's all an illusion, no matter where you are. And we have always warned that the world order of calm and tolerance is broken. Every year there are more and more problems and conflicts. Mankind has entered an apocalyptic time. It's clear that the biblical events of the end time don't occur in one day, but stretch over the years. You can see how tensions increasing, the geopolitical situation is worsening, military conflicts are taking place on different continents, and everything is heading towards a nuclear apocalypse. It's not happening instantly, but we are all given time until the doomsday of the planet. And this resource, time, we should use correctly, because it cannot be returned. Apocalypse and ecological collapse on a planetary scale await mankind. Now the preparations for that time are underway. And in fact, everything depends not on people, but on God and His patience, how much more time God will give. And we need to focus on saving our souls. And in order to do that we need to understand why there are so many problems on earth and how to solve them. Many events and phenomena in this world take their roots and image from the spiritual world. So, for example, Moses, in building the tabernacle, built it in the image of the heavenly tabernacle. God showed him it, explained how to build it, gave him measurements and told him to do it exactly as he said. Also Jesus Christ, being on earth, told parables about the earthly life, so that people would understand. And on the basis of the parables, he showed the secrets and laws of the kingdom of heaven. And we should realize something. Usually a person is registered somewhere, has some private property and is a citizen of some country. And in parallel with this, since all the roots are in the spiritual world, we need to realize that there are different spirits, many kinds of demons, who also have registration, private property and citizenship. And the possessions of demons are people, nations, cities and lands. Proof of this is the book of the prophet Daniel, which describes his meeting with an angel after a 21-day fast and prayer. The angel explained to the prophet that his prayer was heard on the first day, but it took 21 days for the angel to reach Daniel with an answer, because the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted him 21 days. The prince of the Persian kingdom is a spiritual being assigned to that territory. Then, the angel said that he was facing a fight with the prince of Greece, and no one supports him against them except Archangel Michael. Also, Jesus Christ taught that when an impure spirit comes out of a person, he wanders the earth, seeking rest, and not finding one, returns to his house. But when he sees his house swept clean and unoccupied, he takes with him seven other demons who go into that person and live in him. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first, because a person is a temple or a house, where live either impure spirits or the Holy Spirit of God. Therefore, people and whole generations go to eternity, and spirits remain, dominating, planting and spreading their sinful nature. Man dies, and the impure spirit, coming out of him, on the basis of his registration, enters a relative or loved one. Hundreds of years pass and curses, wars, sufferings, traditions remain in certain territories and lands because this land and this territory are the private property of some demon. These problems can only be solved spiritually. For this purpose Christ came to earth and gave his authority to the apostles and the apostolic church. Today, when the war's going on, people have abandoned their cities and homes, and many churches have been destroyed. But the church buildings which survived are empty now. Priests and pastors are often in one place and people are scattered to different parts of the earth. Some hopefully say that this is a good thing and that church people who disperse to other countries will be missionaries there. But most often this is an illusion. 
At best, people will go to another church. The format of Orthodox, Catholic, and Protestant churches focused on building, rituals, economics, politics, and the earthly things cannot withstand the pressure. When there is instability in the state, when there is war between countries, this format of church fails. Even ministers are left without ministries. And it seemed that a person had been in the will of God, but problems came, everyone was separated, and the priest can no longer do the will of God. Only the apostolic biblical church maintains this standard. It is not focused on material things, buildings, rituals, politics, and economics, but on the spirit and truth. If the church is built upon discipleship, then no matter what the circumstances and where the disciples are, such a church will be able to fulfill the Lord's mission. With the apostles Paul and Peter, churches and disciples were able to move forward, grow, do God's will, and nothing could hurt them under any circumstances because it was an apostolic church. There is another serious revelation. At the time of the first church, wars were not between nations, but wars were waged deliberately against the faith and against the apostolic church. First the Jews persecuted the church, then the Roman Empire oppressed and killed believers in Christ, but the church stood and defeated even the Roman Empire. The church converted the pagan Roman Empire to Christianity, making obedient to Christ all nations. Many Romans accepted Jesus Christ as their God, all because it was an apostolic church, a church of disciples. Today's believers, with the coming of instability, war, and collapse, cannot withstand this pressure because they are focused on an earthly kingdom rather than heavenly citizenship. This is why Jesus Christ taught, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. For decades of our ministry, we have been calling you to become disciples of Jesus Christ and the Apostolic Church. No matter where you are, such a church will endure and spread. That is why we are building a discipleship apostolic church, following the Lord's example. And even if we are all scattered, everyone can do God's will, both disciple and minister. The Bible gives us a good example for this, Paul the Apostle. He was able to carry out God's will and the Lord's purposes under all the pressure, persecution, imprisonment, and even attempted killings. Today there are many judges, chatterboxes, philosophers, and propagandists who try to express their opinions. But it is too early to say whose side God is on, for the war isn't yet over. And it will show who won and who lost, whose sins are piled up to heaven, and whose cup of iniquity is overflowing. This will be shown at the finish line. One thing we need to understand, God gives the victory, and everything depends on God alone. But cursed is the one who trusts in man. However, people today are engaged in judgment and condemnation instead of having compassion and helping the tormented and persecuted. War and difficulties test human hearts to see who is filled with what. When people neglect God, trouble comes. That is why the Lord allows these events to happen, so that people's minds and hearts would take the right position and people would turn to God. After all, cursed is the one who trusts in man. Christ says, you build something, but everything will be tested, on what basis have you built, on sand or on rock? Everything will be tested, the ministries, the ministers, the believers, and every man. And God always gives time for repentance, shows mercy and compassion, but people are only engaged in judgment and condemnation. That is the big problem and the trouble. The war is going on and people often say, the Jews submitted to the Romans. And the Bible tells us that the Roman centurion, the occupier, had more faith than Israel. But I want to surprise you. The angel said to the Roman commander, call for the apostle Peter. He will tell you the words with which you and your whole house will be saved. That is, without the apostle there was no salvation for this man, with all his godly righteousness and religiosity. Clearly this was not enough. And if the Jews had to submit to the Romans, the Romans had to submit to the apostles. So the Roman Empire was conquered by the Apostolic Church. And for that, glory be to Jesus Christ. The main thing is that the Church remains the Church and does not deviate from the will of God. Many have lost this revelation over time. But Christ lives forever. And we will give an account to Jesus. That is why the Word of God mission continues to do God's will. For many years we have been creating different spiritual materials to found disciples in the truth. So, there are only two kinds of believers today. The first are Christians who are filled with the Spirit and the truth. They think about the Lord and doing His will. Such devote themselves to the Apostles' teaching and bring the anointing of Christ. They are disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. The second are lay believers who are filled with this world. Their values are materialism, money, flesh, ambitions. They bring the anointing of this world pride, wickedness, and are dependent upon impure spirits. 
The events of recent times take away the masks and show who is who. There are commandments of blessedness in Christ's teaching, and the commandments of blessedness are the commandments of happiness. And if we neglect the commandments of Christ, we are unhappy and cursed. Personally, I constantly reread the three chapters of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount where he teaches how to be happy. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Without the fulfillment of the commandments of happiness and blessedness, it's hard to be happy. So, what are you investing in? What are you giving your life for? For truth? For peace? For Christ? Many people say, I have my own faith, my own relationships with God, my faith is inside me. But faith in God cannot be hidden or concealed, like light in the darkness and like salt, which makes salt at everything it touches. What does Christ say to his disciples in this respect? You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything, except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Beloved, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Do not lose your mind, your precious time and God's will. This time is given to us for testing, for repentance, for cleansing, don't miss it. Keep the grace, be disciples of Christ, and the Lord will be with you and bless you. More than 25 years ago we came to the post-war region. We gave our lives, our youth, our resources to save people. We were condemned in Transnistria because we were from Ukraine. When we came on a mission to Ukraine, they laughed at us for being from Moldova. This was happening because people are focused on the earthly things and not on the heavenly. We see that in order to preach the gospel, the Apostle Paul was a Roman where it was necessary, or a Jew where it was necessary, also he was a Christian and sometimes a Pharisee. That's why, we need to realize that the Lord will estimate our life and ministry by the Spirit, by the fruit and the result. Amen. So, God is the light, and if He is in us, we will illuminate this crazy world. And if we are the salt of the earth, we will manifest and found the kingdom of God to this lost world. Therefore, if God is in us, it cannot be hidden.